All right, math two, here we go. We have angle side angle and angle angle side for our lesson notes today. Now you gotta remember what we're doing here. We're trying to prove triangles are congruent. And at the very first lesson we said, in order for triangles to be congruent, all the sides had to be congruent and all of the angles had to be congruent. And then on the last lesson, we're like, wait, 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 that's a lot of stuff to do. Let's see if we can find any shortcuts. And there were a couple shortcuts we covered. We said if all three sides were congruent, that was enough. You didn't have to prove the extra angles are congruent. And then we said if you have a side, an angle in the middle, and then another side, side angle side, that was enough. So that's another shortcut where you only had to prove three things instead of all three sides, all three angles. So here's some more shortcuts. So we've got angle side angle congruence and angle angle side congruence. And our question for today is, you know, what's the main difference between these two? They both have two angles and a side. So what is really different about them? So that's what you need to answer at the beginning. Now, side angle side congruence says triangles are congruent. When, oh, sorry, angle side angle. Yeah, that's what I said. Angle side angle. Triangles are congruent when two angles and the included side are congruent. So what's that mean? So if I've got two triangles here, Let's say two angles. Okay, so here's one, here's two. All right, so if I've got that, the included side is the side right in between those angles. So this would be angle side angle. So the included side means it has to be the side right in between the two angles. All right, so let's do a proof with this. Remember with our proofs, we've got our given and then what we're trying to prove. This one's gonna take us four steps to do. We've got a diagram over here. So it starts by saying that B is congruent to D. So I'm gonna mark that on my diagram so it's easier to tell what's going on. So B is congruent to D, all right? And then C, so right here, C is the midpoint of BD. So that's a midpoint right there. Of BD. All right, so let's write down the first thing that we do with our proofs is we write down what they gave us. They gave us that angle B was congruent to angle D. And they said that C is the midpoint of BD. All right, that's what they gave me, so the reason is it was given. All right, now we talked about keeping track of what we have, because sometimes people are like, well, how many congruent things that do we have right now? And they'd be, well, we got two. We've got an angle, and since this is the midpoint, we've got a side, so we've got two things right now. And that's not true. We only have something proven when we see this congruent sign right here. So the only thing that has been proven is that we have an angle so far. And this one, of course, is going to be angle side angle. So let's try to prove that we have a side that's congruent right now. Well, I know that this is the midpoint of BD. Now we know by the definition of midpoints that midpoints cut this segment in half into two congruent parts. So that means since it's a midpoint that this segment is congruent to that segment. So now I can say, okay, so BC has to be congruent to CD. Now, how did I know that? I knew that because they told me it was a midpoint, and midpoints 
create two congruent segments, basically, because it cuts it in half. So my reason over here is definition of a midpoint. Now, if you look in previous lessons, you'll notice that I'm always writing in blue your reasons that you can put in your proof. And one of our reasons from a previous lesson was definition of a midpoint. So that's my reason. The definition of a midpoint says that a midpoint splits a segment into two congruent parts. So here's the two congruent parts it got split into. All right, and just keeping track of what I am proving congruent. So I see the congruent sign again, so I just proved something else. All right, now of course we're trying angle side angle here. So I don't have anything else shown congruent. I need to show another angle congruent. And I notice from the diagram that I have vertical angles. And we know vertical angles are always congruent. So since it's on the diagram, it's kind of part of what's given to me. I can show that in the diagram, these are vertical angles. So now I'm going to say that angle ACB, remember you have to use three letters for this one because you can't say angle C because there's like a bunch of angles at angle C. So you have to use three letters. Angle ACD, so that's this angle right here, is congruent to DCE, so this angle over here. And the reason why I know that is we just said those are vertical angles, so vertical angles are congruent. All right, now keeping track over here, I've got angle, side, angle. That is enough to prove that those two triangles are congruent. Because look, I've got two angles and the included side. Included, meaning it's a side right in between those two angles. So now I can say those triangles are congruent. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle E, D, C. And the reason why I know that's true is because I've proven that I have angle, side, angle over here. So my reason will be angle, side, angle. Because the two triangles are congruent when two angles and the included side are congruent. All right, so there's angle, side, angle. Now here's angle, angle, side, which also uses two angles and a side, but it's slightly different from the previous one. This one is going to tell us that triangles are congruent when two angles and the non-included side. Are congruent. All right, so let's draw a quick picture of what that would look like. So here's I got a triangle, here I got another triangle. Okay, so two angles, so here's one, here's one, here's a second angle, here's a second angle. So there's the angle angle part. The non included side would be like this side over here. So this is angle angle side angle, angle, side. So it kind of, when you're doing this one, it skips the included side and moves to the non-included side. Okay, now the order matters. I've got one tick mark, two tick marks, and then the side. One tick mark, two tick marks, and the side. If I would have marked this one right here, it wouldn't have worked because the angle that is next to the non-included side matters. Okay, so it has to have the correct angle order too. So the angle order matters. Okay, so here's example two. In example two, we've got three separate triangles and only two of them are congruent. So let's look at what we've got. We have to find out which ones are the ones that are the same. So in triangle one, 
I've got angle, angle, side. Okay. Triangle two, I've got angle, angle, side. Well, all right. Next one, I've got angle, angle, side. So you might be thinking, Mr. Holcomb, check this out. All of them are angle, angle, side. They're all the same but they're not because order matters. Now let's look at this first one. The side is touching the angle with one tick mark. Over here, the side is touching the angle with two tick marks. Those are not the same. They're in a different order. And over here, the side is touching the one with two tick marks. So it's these two that are congruent to each other because it goes one tick mark, two tick marks side, one tick mark, two tick marks side. So it has to be that order. This one is not congruent to these two. Only these two are congruent because of the order. The side was touching the one angle tick mark here, but over here the side is touching the two angle tick marks. So the order matters, which makes it a little bit tricky. Now they want us to write a congruent statement. Remember the congruent statement the first triangle you write in any order you want. So I'll just do D, E, F because that makes sense. Is congruent to triangle. Now the order matters for this one. D had two tick marks. So the corresponding angle has to be I. So I has to come first on this one. Next E, E had one tick mark. So I have to come over here to G and that has one tick mark. So they correspond. And then finally, F has no tick marks on it, and H has no tick marks on it. So now everything is set up. Now look at this. Uh, D, F is the first and last. That's the one with one tick mark on the side. And then over here, the first and last are I, H, and that's also the one with one tick mark on the side. So now I can see that my corresponding sides are also matching up when I do it like that. All right, almost done. We've got one more definition that we can start using. Well, actually two, but these are kind of used together. So we've got, so this is, remember it's in blue, so that's a reason you can start using in your proofs. First is called just the definition of perpendicular. So what does perpendicular mean? So what we're gonna use is, and this is the symbol for perpendicular, it's like an upside down T. So we know that perpendicular lines, you know, when two lines cross, they're going to make a 90 degree angle. So perpendicular lines create right angles. I mean, they usually create four right angles. We'll just say create right angles. All right, now notice I don't see the congruent symbol in here, and we usually want to show something's congruent, you know, for our proofs. So usually, well, a lot of times, right after definition of perpendicular, you use this reason. All right angles are congruent. So this is generally, in a proof, used after definition of uh, perpendicular. All right, so here's our next one. We're gonna end up using this reason up here for our proof. So in our given, we've got angle M is congruent to angle T. All right, so there's one thing proven congruent. And then here it says that AH is perpendicular to MT. So this is AH right here, and it's perpendicular to MT. So we know that this is going to be, see I got the little perpendicular sign there? Mm -hmm. See how I do that? Okay, cool. So this is gonna be perpendicular right there. All right, let's start this. We write down our given, angle M, is congruent to angle T. And I know that side AH or segment AH is perpendicular to MT. 
and I know that's true because they gave it to me, so it's given. All right, so far <coughs> I have proved an angle congruent. <coughs> that's all, because I've got this sign right here. Now, since they told me that this is perpendicular, I can now say that these are right angles. So that's a right angle, and that's a right angle. So I'm going to say angle MHA and then on the other side angle uh, THA are right angles. How do I know the right angles? because it told me they're perpendicular. So that's the definition of perpendicular. Notice I did not write the congruent sign. So I can't mark that I proved anything over here because I didn't mark the congruent sign. But we know if both of these are 90, they have to be congruent to each other. So now I'm going to say the angle MHA is congruent to angle THA because they're both 90 degrees. And see how we use this the second time? So this follows this one, and now we're going to just say, well, I know that's right because all right angles have to be congruent to each other because they're all 90 degrees, and congruent means they have the same measurement. So my reason will be all right angles are congruent. And now, since I have the congruent sign, I have now proven another angle. All right, I've got two out of the three. It's kind of like baseball. Three strikes, and you can get out of the proof, right? So I only have two strikes right now. I need a third strike. And I'm kind of at a, a stopping point because the given has only given me two things so far that I've been able to use, and I need a third. But remember to look for shared sides. See this side right here? This side is shared by both of them. So on this triangle, it has AH, and on this triangle, it has AH. So now I can say that AH is congruent to itself, AH. So AH on this triangle is the same thing as AH on the other triangle. So that's a side. Now, the reason is, well, it's obvious, it has to be congruent to itself, right? And I was talking to, in class the other day, it's kind of like when the doctor hits your knee to check your reflexes. It's just automatic. It happens right away, right? This is automatic. Anything is equal to itself. It's like checking your reflexes. So this is the reflexive property. All right, I have done one, two, three, three strikes. We can get out of here. So now I can say that the triangles are congruent. And the reason why they are is angle, angle, side. This is a non-included side, so that's angle, angle, side. And then we're done. There's our proof. All right, remember in your notes, you have to answer the question that was at the beginning. So at the end of your notes, you now have to answer the question, what's the main difference between angle side angle and angle angle side? So write that answer right here at the end of your notes. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.